We, right now, are just days away from NASA's launch of the Artemis One mission. On Monday, a new spacecraft will begin its journey to the moon with no crew on board, though. So we want to bring you a preview now of our CBS Reports documentary, which reveals the incredible endeavor of America's next great leap into space exploration and the collective will required to see it through. America's heading back to the moon on the most powerful rocket NASA has ever built. It's going to pack a punch of 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust at launch. Building on mankind's giant leap a half century ago. Oh boy, it looks good, Wally. The eagle has landed. <laughs> oh boy. Boy. The Artemis program will launch a new era of deep space exploration. We want to do something we've never done before, both on the moon, but especially beyond that. This first mission will be uncrewed, but the stakes sky high. Subsequent missions, we will have crews and their lives are at stake based off the certification data we'll get from this launch. And so is the price tag. The individual cost for Artemis 1, 2, 3, and 4 is $4.1 billion per launch. We see that as unsustainable for the Artemis program. This is Artemis, America's 21st century moonshot. So our senior national correspondent, Mark Strassman, is at the Kennedy Space Center with more on this mission. Listen, that little bit right there that we saw <laughs> gave me chills. Because this is, cool. a, this is a really, really, really big deal. And it's a much different mission than Apollo, obviously, for many, many reasons. Um, but what is the goal of Monday's launch? And what role does it play in the overall Artemis mission? Well, th those are very good questions, Emory and Earl. Uh, look, th you can think about this as uh, Artemis as Apollo on steroids, okay? It's mm -hmm. a mission back to the moon, but a lot about it is different, and not just the technology and the power of the, of the rocket you see behind me. This SLS rocket uh, is the most powerful that NASA has ever built. I mean, essentially what we're doing here is we're, we're, this is a test flight to go around the moon and back. They're going to work it very, very hard, uh, harder than they would if there were people aboard, because they want to put people aboard Artemis II, which is another loop around the moon, and then Artemis III, which is the actual moon landing with any luck in the next four or five years, okay? So this one is really important because NASA has to nail it. They've got to nail it to keep the schedule on track for Artemis II and Artemis III. It's going to be a spectacular launch on, on uh, Monday morning. There hasn't been a, a, a launch on the power of this rocket really since the 60s, and, 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 and probably it's even greater than that. But remember, too, everybody's going to be watching to make sure that NASA has its moon game back, right? Because nobody mm. who's working on this current uh, Artemis mission has ever done it before. They've worked on <laughs> shuttle missions, they've worked on the ISS missions, but they've never done a moonshot quite like this. And, Mark, you know, I am a, a fan of these efforts, and I find them really interesting. But I'll play devil's advocate here, because previously on the first moon mission, it inspired millions of people to get into math and to science. It made people want to come to America. It made other countries want to develop their own technology. But why now is it important for the states to get back to the moon, considering we've been there and done that? And how much of this is about really flexing American muscle um, for ego's sake, to kind of show the world once again this can be repeated. Well, I, I mean, you, you can call it flexing a muscle, but there's also a theory that great countries do great things. And in and, and space, the, the effort to go to space is one of those boxes you check if you want to be thought of as a superpower. Mm -hmm. So is it flexing a muscle or is it simply exercising the resources that, that you ha unusually have to, to push man to, to, uh, to, to go out of this world to exceed himself? So that's number one. Um, but the bottom line, too, is remember that the, the, the goal, the ultimate goal is not the moon. The ultimate goal is to use the moon to learn, to harvest natural resources, and then to move on to Mars and then beyond. These are really ambitious, grandiose plans that NASA has, but they all have to start somewhere. And, and the thinking currently is the place to start is the moon. There's no better training ground from Mars than, than by going on the moon, figuring it out again in 2022 standards, and then, we can, and then they believe here at NASA that they can move on 
uh, you know, for what sounds like science fiction, but the hope will soon become science fact. Yeah, and as I understand it, the thing about the moon is once once you get there, not only is it, you know, quite a distance, but once you get there, you got to stay. Unlike, not, not so, I mean Mars, once you get to Mars, you got to stay. Unlike the moon, if you have a problem, you mm. can probably come back. But if you're on Mars, you got to wait till the, you know, planets align and below. So you could be there for a good long time. You just nailed it. I mean, if the goal is sustained living in deep space, and the, if the idea is let's establish a presence on the moon, because that will teach us how we can exist even farther away mm -hmm. on, on some, a planet as distant as Mars is. Because you're right, if you get in trouble on Mars, I mean, there's, there's no calling like intergalactic AAA <laughs> to right. give you a tow back to, you know, back to, right. to, back to KSC <laughs> or JSC or, or California. It's just not going to happen, right. right? You're on your own. So you've got to make sure that you're in, in good deep space shape on the moon, the thinking is, before you can even think about going to Mars. Now, so, so, well, was, uh, go ahead. Uh, well, what I was going to say was uh, um, that, that, so this is a step to get to a step to get to another step. Um, the middle step is to get Americans back on the moon. And what, one of the things that NASA's really been pushing is that they're going to have the first woman on the moon. So for this documentary, you interviewed one of the women who could be assigned to a subsequent crewed mission. Um, what did she make of this, you know, the historical significance of this program? Yeah, her name is Kayla Barron. She's, uh, she's one of a number of uh, women astronauts in this uh, current astronaut class of 42 folks. Uh, a very different class, by the way, than the Apollo era. Apollo era, as you remember, it was all guys and it was all white dudes, right? In this astronaut class, you have uh, female astronauts, black astronauts, Hispanic astronauts, Asian astronauts, and, and they all essentially will tell you the same thing if you ask them about the diversity. They'll say two things. One, diversity is a strength, both uh, personally and professionally in this class that they bring to NASA. And two, this class reflects America in 2022. Frankly, the Apollo classes in the 1960s didn't reflect America at all. It reflected one, one piece of America. This class, very, very different, but they, again, see this as a fundamental strength that they bring to the table. That is, that they are different, but they are united in their sense of purpose, and that is to get to the moon and then beyond the moon. Hey, just, just out of curiosity, Mark, I know we talked about just how big this rocket is, but I've never, ever seen, like, a rocket in real life. But you have. So I'm curious about, you know, with your knowledge, and you take a look at the thing behind you, how massive is it compared to what you've seen before? Uh, it's, you know, 322 feet. Um, it's not quite as big as the Saturn V rocket was in the 60s, uh, but it is more powerful. It is significantly bigger than, for instance, um, the SpaceX launches that you've been seeing for the last three, four, five mm -hmm. years. Uh, from from another platform, but um, we're going to see something on Monday morning that is the launch itself, assuming it's a go. Uh, the, the 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 sheer power of it, the spectacle of it, is going to be. You know, I always say this, Emery. If you ever have a chance to see a launch, it's one of the most memorable man-made moments you can ever imagine. Okay, mm -hmm. and this one is going to top anything that I've seen until now. So. For that reason, more than 100,000 folks are expected to line the beaches and causeways on Monday morning, hoping for a glimpse of what they hope will be space history. Yeah, and no matter what you think of, of the mission itself, that will be an incredible moment to watch. Yeah. Mark will be there, and we will carry it here for you all live. Is it too late to call out and get a flight <laughs> down there? Because Mark really sold it. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Uh, you can stream the CBS Reports documentary Artemis America's New Moonshot this Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern on CBS News, or you can watch it anytime on the free CBS News app. We'll be right back.